Hello everyone, welcome to Code Quick. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the time complexity and space complexity. So, what is time complexity? So, time complexity is the amount of time taken to run an algorithm. Let me write it down here. Amount of time taken to run an algorithm is known as time complexity. So, you would have heard from your peers or friends that saying, hey, your algorithm runs in order 1 or time or order n, time or order n square and etc. So, whenever they say it's order something, this is known as big O notation. So, which is represented like this O of n, where O is known as big O notation and n is the input size basically. So, big O notation describes uh, upper bound on time. For example, an algorithm that prints all values in the array could be described as order n. So, it means it's taking order n time. So, big O is the metric we often use to describe the efficiency of algorithms. And I strongly believe that it is very important to understand the time complexity in depth for a given particular algorithm. There are other types of notations also like omega, theta, but mostly in all the interviews, coding interviews, big O notation is widely used. So now let's take a few pieces of code and let's analyze them and find the complexity for it. So yeah, let's come to this code piece first. So this is a simple for loop where it's printing elements from 0 to n. So straightforward starting from 0 it is printing from n and every time it is incrementing uh, one time so the time complexity for this is order of n so if you see let's say let's assume n equal to 10 so first time it will print i equal to 0 next 1 next 2 3 4 and so on up till 9 this means that this this means that this inner this for loop runs exactly n times which is why the time complexity is order n let's come to the next example so this is the same example but here uh, i starts from n and i is greater than or equal to 0 whereas in previous example if you see i is less than n and also it's i is decrementing after every iteration so let's take n as 5 so in the first iteration so in the first iteration 5 will be printing in the next iteration 5 minus 1 which is 4 will be printing in the next iteration 4 minus 1 which is 3 will be printing and next will be 2 1 and then it will be printing uh, 0 as i is greater than or equal to 0. So basically here if you see it is printing 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 which is n plus 1 times. So the time complexity will be order of n plus 1 where we will ignore the constant which will further become order of n. So it will become order of n. So next consider next example. So in this example, if you see, in the first for loop, uh, we do n chunks of work. That is, the loop is iterated from 0 to n, which is n times. And in the second for loop, it is iterated m times. So, the total amount of the work done is order of n plus m. So, these are two for loops separately and these are not nested, which is when we will write the answer as order of n plus m. So one more thing to observe here is like if n is let's say if n is very large number 1000 and m is very small number like 1 in that case this becomes order of maximum of n comma m which is further reduced to order of n assuming assuming that n is very very large than m so two things remember ha you have to remember two things while solving time complexity problems one whenever you get individual for loops you have to add the time complexities like order of n plus m so 
let's say if n is n and it will further come to order of n plus n which is order of 2n in this case you have to remove the constants so here if you see in this line number 79 every time you need to drop the constants and you need to ignore the ones which are least affected which are least in number so this you can remember it like if your algorithm is in this form where like do this when you're all done do that so first here we are doing this we are running this n times then we are coming to this loop and we are running this m times which is why uh, we added them individually so in the next case let's take this so this is these are known as uh, nested for loops so basically what we have to see here is how many times the inner loop is running and outer loop is running so if you see in for outer loop i equal to 0 i less than or less than n so inner loop outer loop is running n times so outer loop is running n times but whereas inner loop is running see j is also less than n it is also running n times so overall time complexity will be order of n into n so for nested loops you need to multiply so this will further become order of n square okay let's take some more examples okay so in this case uh, we have an nested for loop again so first loop is running from 1 to n second loop is running from 1 but see if you observe carefully this is running from 1 to n so i is less than n j is also less than n so here every time i is incrementing i plus plus whereas here if you see j is not incrementing by 1 j is incrementing i times so let's take an example so every time you get such piece of code which is little complicated the best way to solve a time complexity problem is dry run the code and reduce the time complexity out of it so let's assume that uh, n equal to 4 for now so just see let's see how many times the inner for loop runs so for i equal to 4 let's see how many times it runs so if you observe carefully every time it will run n by i times so basically it first time it will run 4 by 1 times second time it's going to run 4 by 2 times third time 4 by 3 and 4 and so on so this is basically log n series so that overall time complexity will be a multiplication of the outer loop and inner loop which is order of so outer loop is or uh, is running n times so n into inner loop it's log n so this will become order of n log n so this clearly is n by 1 plus n by 2 plus n by 3 as and so on is a clearly uh, it's a log n series uh, you can uh, find the proof on internet so yeah the main point to observe here main point to observe here is inner loop is running n by i times if you see so i'll explain one more time so as we took n equal to 4 so initially when i equal to 1 j will be i which is 1 when i equal to 1 this will run up till n which is 4 so first time it's going to run 4 by 1 times when i equal to 2 j equal to 2 j will be incrementing 2 every time so basically this inner loop when i equal to 2 when i equal to 2 this inner loop will run only 2 times which is 4 by 2 similarly when it's 3 this will be incrementing 3 every times which will be running 4 by 3 times and so on so let's go on to the next example yes so in this example we have two for loops okay first for loop is int i equal to n i less greater than 0 and i equal to i by 2 so i is dividing, dividing by 2 every time and inside it's j less than i again j plus plus so let's see how many times inner loop is getting executed if as like let's assume n equal to 4 so for n equal to 4 as you see after first iteration it will become by 2 
and so on and this inner loop is going to stop as soon as j greater than i inner loop stops as soon as j becomes greater than i so when n equal to 4 so first time it will be 4 in the first iteration second time it will be 4 by 2 and third time it will be 4 by 4 and it stops afterwards so which is 4 plus 2 plus 1 so if you observe the sum is 7 so if you clearly observe 7 which is 2 n minus 1 so this is the form actually so this is the final relation we got so order of 2 n minus 1 is equal to order of n as we talked previously small constants are not going to affect the time complexity so the final answer is order of n so let's even if you assume n equal to 8 it will be 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 which will be 2 n minus 1 the entire series if you calculate so overall complexity will be order n so yeah so these are examples for uh, time complexity so now let's talk about the space complexity yeah let's talk about space complexity so time is not only the thing that matters in an algorithm we should also care about the amount of memory or space which is required by algorithm so amount of so it's basically amount of space or memory required by an algorithm so this is basically space complexity so you can say that it's a parallel concept to time complexity so let's say uh, so i'll give you an example so let's say uh, we have an array so let's say we have an array where we have six five elements one comma two comma three comma four comma five so we have an array where we have five elements and we want to transfer this into array b transfer to array b so for transferring elements from array a to array b which is empty initially so what we will do is we'll iterate through all of the elements and keep inserting from a to b so creating an array would take order n time so space complexity in this case space complexity for creating an extra array will be order n let's say so this is 1d array let's say if you need a two dimensional array of size n cross n you would need order of n square space and in some functions recursive functions the stack space is also counted stack space in recursive calls is also counted so this is uh, space complexity so in this lecture we have covered basically the time complexity and space complexity and we have seen a few of examples uh, please practice them again so so what is the order of growth so here i will give you the order of growth for time complexity so it goes as like this so first order of one this is constant time if an algorithm runs in order one time it's the best ever time time complexity we have ever got and it's very efficient so next immediate will be order of log n after that order of n to the root n square root n sqrtn it's better to represent this way next will be linear time which is order n next will be order of n log n which will be greater than order of n square which will be greater than order of n cube which will be greater than order of 2 power n so this is the order of growth so if you see this is the order of the growth of the time complexities where this is the best time complexity we ever got and this is the worst this is or uh, this is the uh, this is increasing exponentially 2 power n is basically increasing exponentially so this is it guys so in the next upcoming lecture i will discuss a few more time complexity problems Thank you for now. Bye.